Embedded within the Bible are key hidden meanings and mystical principles designed to help souls reach their highest spiritual potential. From the metaphysical perspective, in addition to being a tool of faith, the Bible can be studied as a roadmap to empower the creative abilities and achieve enlightenment. I receive many questions in regards to the Bible and the hidden meanings within it. For example, is the Bible a manual for the moral and spiritual development of our minds? Does the Bible contain the instructions for life, or is it intended to keep us in mental confusion? Are there missing books of the Bible? And are there hidden meanings within the Bible's verses? And if so, how can I translate them? For the purposes of this video, I will address the last question presented. This topic can be quite debatable, and I'm certain my own understanding as an ordained minister of the metaphysical ministry will not resonate with everyone who watches this video due to varying religions and viewpoints. However, when open to understanding, religion and metaphysics are merely different aspects of the same spiritual process. I will share here what I have researched from other thought leaders within the metaphysical arena. If that sentence offends you, it may be time to exit this video now. But if you are open to this understanding, I welcome you to continue watching and discovering how it may intertwine with what you already believe. According to Emmett Fox, an Irish New Thought spiritual leader of the early 20th century, the Bible is a book of metaphysics. He is quoted as saying, The Bible is really a textbook of metaphysics, a manual for the growth of the soul, and it looks at all questions from this point of view. Dr. Fox explains how the Bible, when interpreted from a metaphysical viewpoint, guides the reader in manifesting or demonstrating God. He says, Earth means manifestation, and man's function is to manifest or express God, or cause. The earth is a general term covering all our expression or manifestation. Our earth, which is our world, down to every detail of our lives, is really under our own dominion and is made and unmade by our word. Earth means the whole of your outer experience, and to inherit the earth means to have dominion over that outer experience. When the Bible talks about the earth, possessing the earth, governing the earth, making the earth glorious, and so forth, it is referring to the conditions of our lives, from our bodily health outwards to the farthest point in our affairs. That is how you should handle your mentality. That is how you should practice the metaphysical teaching. You demonstrate the state of your mind at any given time. You experience in the outer what you really think in the inner. This is the meaning of the old saying, as within, so without. Note carefully that in the Bible, the word within always means thought, and the word without means manifestation or experience. That is why Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven, health, harmony, and freedom, is within. Harmonious thought means harmonious experience. Fear thought or anger thought means suffering or frustration. Let's talk specifically about the word manifestation. The word manifestation, as found in the New Testament, is translated from the Greek word phanerosis and means the attaining of visibility or the act or process of becoming visible. The root word of phanerosis is phos, meaning light. For something to be revealed, demonstrated, or made visible, there must be light, the source of which comes from connecting to the light within. Therefore, manifestation can be briefly described as connecting to the source within to make visible that which is not visible yet. From this explanation, we can uncover some of the hidden meanings of the Bible verses by interpreting them metaphysically. While the core teachings of the Bible were written by illumined souls who learned the ways in which to directly connect with the divine light within, through the centuries, the Bible has been meddled with and less inspired hands have left their mark there. The goal in understanding the hidden teachings of the Bible is to find the divine jewels embedded within the text. According to an article written on unityhill.org entitled, A Tiny Intro into Metaphysical Bible Interpretation, they state, We begin by listing all the nouns, persons, places, or things in the scripture, and then looking up what they mean or symbolize, metaphysically speaking. There are two great resources available to serve you in your metaphysical exploration. The first is Charles Fillmore's Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. The second is the website truthunity.net. Charles Fillmore's Metaphysical Bible Dictionary is a 1,000 plus page manual that's a fantastic resource to begin decoding and translating Bible meaning for yourself. 
I'll leave a link to this manual in the description of this video. TruthUnity.net also does a lot of this translation work for us. Let's take a look at their translation of a few verses that have significant hidden meanings and how we can take instruction from their true message. Matthew 6.6 6 reads, But you, when you pray, enter into your chamber, and having shut your door, pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Truth Unity's translation of this is as follows. Enter into your chamber. Metaphysically understood, the inner chamber is the spiritual consciousness within the mind and soul of man. It is also called the secret place of the Most High. Having shut your door, shutting the door of the mind is closing out the thoughts of the outer world from one's consciousness. Pray to your Father who is in secret. The spiritual center within every one of us is hidden and secret from the outer consciousness. When we, in the silence, center our attention upon spirit within us, we make contact with the universal spirit in which we live, move, and have our being. Another verse is 1 Corinthians 3, verses 10 through 12. According to the grace of God which was given to me, as a wise master builder I laid a foundation, and another builds on it. But let each man be careful how he builds on it. For no one can lay any other foundation than that which has been laid, which is Jesus Christ. But if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or stubble, each man's work will be revealed. And Truth Unity's translation is as follows. I laid a foundation. Self-reliance is invaluable to man in building a Christ-like character because only a competent workman can erect a building in a workmanlike manner. One must know one's work and must know that one knows it. Foundation that that which has been laid, which is Jesus Christ. The perfect Christ's foundation is laid in the ideal of every man's being, as he exists in divine mind. No other than this can be laid, but men will build diverse superstructures upon it, each according to his bent. Wood, hay, or stubble. Negative thoughts that are of little, if any, value in character building and that fail to endure. For the most part, they are not in any respect building material. John 1 verse 9 tells us, The true light that enlightens everyone was coming into the world. And the translation reads as follows. The true light that enlightens everyone was coming into the world. The true light, the Christ or Word, that lights every man coming into the world is and ever has been in man. Even the outer man was formed and came into existence through it. Up to a certain stage in his unfolding, man does not recognize this truth. Now, however, this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, is being revealed to the race with more and more clarity and with greatly increased power. Romans 12 verse 2 reads, Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what is the good, well-pleasing, and perfect will of God. And the translation is, Don't be conformed. In Greek, conformed or fashioned is suskematizo, to conform oneself, i.e. one's mind and character, to another's pattern, fashion oneself according to. Transformed by the renewing of your mind. Of ourselves we cannot, by taking thought, add one cubit to our stature. But by thinking of the Christ and claiming the power of the Christ in all that we do, we do express a higher degree of power than we have known before. Acts 2 verse 38 reads, Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the translation is, Repent, baptized, receive the Holy Spirit. To repent is to change the mind, to give up error for truth. Baptism washes away the old state of thought and dissolves all negative conditions, that we may be ready to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. And even the Sabbath is translated on truthunity.net as, It was the Sabbath on that day. Sabbath is not a day of the week. It is a state of mind entered into by a person, when he goes into the silence of his own soul, into the realm of spirit. In this mental state, healing becomes the normal, easy thing. Obviously, we could continue with this type of translation for quite some time, but I encourage you to do this on your own with the links given. And also bring your own experience to the interpretation. So the meaning you gain has value to your life and experiences. You may even choose to ask the divine light to illuminate what you are meant to understand from your reading. 
In the sacred writings of the Bible, we have been given a wealth of knowledge and information to work with. These teachings and their deeper hidden meanings have much to offer those who seek clarity, including in the realm of manifestation and enlightenment. I encourage you to go within and nurture your connection with the light inside of you. And in doing so, you are given the power to transform every aspect of your life.